Hi. All right, this is just a quick rundown of all of the forms of transport. Um, so we're looking at cell transport, which means that we're moving things in and out of a cell. And somehow they have to get through, around, whatever. They have to make it past the cell membrane. And remember, we always talk about the cell membrane like it's the guardian of the cell, the um, gatekeeper. Uh, so there has to be some kind of um, way for them to get in. So we divide it into two main categories. Those that require energy, which are active transport. Think about if you're really active, it requires energy. And then the other forms of transport are those that don't require energy. Now, there are a lot of more specific examples out there than we're going to go through. And it would take a long time to really understand and get to know all of the different ways that things get in and out. But in general, we're going to step back and take a look at some of the most used forms, um, maybe some of the more general forms, and some of the more important forms. Um, so we're going to start with just passive transport. There are three forms of passive transport, diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis, okay? So what makes them different? What, well, first let's talk about what makes them the same. Why are they all the same? They're all the same because they're passive transport. This means that they're moving from high concentration to low concentration in a concentration gradient. So what that's going to look like is, let's say I've got, I'm going to see if I can do this, down here I'm making some dots. Now, naturally things want to spread out. I don't know if you were there or remember me talking about this in class, about how if you walk to the middle of a gym with this giant bucket of balls and you dump them in the middle of the gym floor, are they going to crowd together or are they going to all spread out until, you know, they're basically spread out somewhat evenly throughout the gym floor? So what happens is they're all going to spread out. Molecules do this naturally. They naturally want to spread out. And that's because they are always bouncing off of each other anyway. The only time molecules aren't moving is at this super, 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 super low temperature called zero. Um, sorry, excuse me, absolute zero. So um, at absolute zero is the only time molecules aren't moving. Even like in a countertop at room temperature, we can't see it, but those molecules are vibrating. They're always moving. So you can imagine these molecules aren't even held together tightly, so they're going to bounce off of each other until they spread out. So naturally, molecules want to move with that gradient. And moving with that gradient means that we're going from high concentration whoops, to low concentration. That's with the gradient. So the reason that these molecules move into or out of the cell is because they're moving with a gradient. It's kind of like being on a tube going down a river. They're not using any of their energy. They're kind of just being pushed in that direction. Um, like if you're on a tube, you just get pushed down the river. Now, if you wanted to turn around and swim back up river against the gradient, that's going to take a lot of energy. And so that would be active transport. We'll get to that in a minute, though. All right. So the three forms of passive transport are all involving molecules moving from high concentration to low concentration. The first one is diffusion, sometimes just called simple diffusion. What makes simple diffusion um, unique is that um, they, these molecules move right through the cell membrane. So um, they're still moving with the concentration gradient, but these molecules are so small. They're like um, oxygen molecules, which is just two atoms big bonded together, or carbon dioxide, which is just three atoms um, 
it's really small molecules and they go right through that cell membrane and they're moving with the concentration gradient. So that's diffusion. Now sometimes molecules need to move with that concentration gradient, but maybe they have too much of a charge, so they might get stuck at, on one of these hydrophilic heads um, from the cell membrane, or um, they might be too big, or some other problem. They just might need help getting in. Facilitated is kind of like saying I'm helping. It's diffusion that needs help. And so it comes in the form of a protein. So this protein is embedded in the cell membrane. And it creates this safe passage, this hallway that those molecules that can't go right across the cell membrane, it gives them a place to cross. So it's kind of just like a safe passage or a hallway or a doorway. So facilitated diffusion uses a protein. Um, that protein is usually something like a channel protein. Now there are a lot of other ones, but if you understand that a channel protein just kind of serves as a safe hallway for these molecules to move through, um, then you've got the idea of facilitated diffusion. Then the last one is osmosis. Now water, this is osmosis is specifically talking about water molecules going across the cell membrane. And that can happen actually Water can either go right through the cell membrane, and there are also um, special pumps or special uh, proteins along the cell membrane that will take in big amounts of water all at once. When the cell, like there are certain cells that need more water than others, they might have lots of these pumps to make sure that they're always pulling in lots and lots of water. Um, so water can get in both ways. Um, generally, water is moving with the concentration gradient. Those pumps are a special exception to the rule, so we aren't, that's probably the last time I'm going to mention those. Um, but if you do get to college biology, um, they might mention them there. Um, so I just wanted you to, to be aware that that is a possibility, but it's kind of one of those exceptions to the rule. So generally, we're just going to think of osmosis as water crossing right across the cell membrane. It just goes across the cell membrane, um, and that's water. So that's a, these are all passive transports, because they're moving with the concentration gradient from high to low. Um, this one goes, the small molecules go right across the cell membrane. This one they need help from a protein, like a channel protein. And this one is water crossing the cell membrane. All right, so the next group of um, transport are active transport. Now these are all of the ones that require energy. And I'm going to quick clear my screen because I'm making a mess of it. Okay, so we're going to take a look at there are three types of active transport. And, there's a, and there are, again, lots of other forms, but these are the three that we're going to get to know. Um, and I shouldn't say lots of other forms. There aren't lots of other forms. But these are the three we're going to get to know. Um, protein pumps, endocytosis, and exocytosis. Um, and the reason that I put them in two different colors are because the reason that they require energy are different. Protein pumps require ATP. They directly use ATP. And that's because they are going against that concentration gradient. Um, so they use ATP to pump things against the concentration gradient. It's kind of like if you're filling your tire, your bike tire, you've got one of those hand pumps. Your tire is already somewhat full of you know, molecules in there and air, right? Those air are, those are molecules. And if we push and push and push on that pump, we're still, we're like shoving more molecules into that tire. And it takes a lot of work because it's already crowded in there. And that's kind of how the pumps work. They're moving things against that concentration gradient. They're pushing molecules into an already crowded environment. 
So these require ATP directly. So every time they pump a molecule into or out of the cell, it requires an ATP molecule. And ATP is like energy for every cell. Remember the, the comparison between a check and cash? ATP is the cash. It, it can be spent anywhere in any cell. Um, and so that's the most usable form of energy. Now these two um, are using a vesicle to transport things in and out of the cell, which is just like a little bubble of membrane. Um, and because it requires kind of some cellular material, the, the membrane and whatnot, and transporting it, um, that does require energy. Now, it doesn't pump an ATP. It doesn't directly use an ATP every time it moves molecules. But because it costs the cell material, it's still active transport. It still costs the cell. And so um, these two are using energy a little more, a little differently than the protein pumps. So just be clear about that. So we've got three forms of active transport. We've got these proteins. Remember we had our cell membrane? And then we have um, these proteins embedded in the cell membrane. And some of them are um, like channels, like we talked about over here with facilitated diffusion. But pumps actually use an ATP every time they're specific to one or two molecules. The molecule will um, enter the protein, and as soon as it does, it makes this change in the shape of the protein. And the protein uses an ATP molecule to push something into or out of the cell into the highly concentrated area. Where endocytosis and exocytosis, if you remember, um, I've got a picture here. Here would be the pump. These molecules attach to the protein. It uses an ATP and pumps them across. And then um, if we look at these two down here, here we've got the cellular material. Sometimes it's just a whole bunch of liquid or it's a really one really big molecule. Um, but the cell starts to kind of just form this membrane back around it and as soon as it's completely surrounded it pulls that oops pulls that into the cell uh, okay pulls it into the cell in a vesicle and takes it where it needs to go and since it's going into the cell this is endocytosis and the opposite can happen too you know remember we learned that proteins kind of get packaged in the golgi apparatus and then sent off in a vesicle so we could think of these as proteins being sent off in a vesicle. Um, that vesicle comes up, it uh, binds to the membrane, becomes part of the membrane, and then just dumps the contents outside. So that's how endocytosis and exocytosis move really large molecules. That's kind of the defining feature of endocytosis and exocytosis. These are moving against the concentration gradient. And these are moving really large molecules or really large quantities of molecules. Um, and they use a vesicle to do that. 